Hello there! Well, today we'll show you how to create these pink magnolias with the 36 piece watercolour cake set. These paints are vibrant and ideal for brightly themed watercolours. Before we start, if you'd like to see more art lessons, then log on to www.montmart.net as there is lots more there, as well as links to our Facebook and Instagram pages and our art club, The Creative Connection. For this quick little study we'll be using the A3 drawing board, 300 GSM watercolour pad, the 36 piece watercolour set, number 4 round and number 12 mop brushes, a 3 quarter flat brush as well as the brush that comes with the cake set here. Although not compulsory, it's a good idea to create a true swatch of how the colours look on paper. I then print out the PDF that can be downloaded from the Magnolia lesson at our website and take out the outline and shade the back side of the image. I flip it over, take the corner to a fresh sheet of watercolour paper and retrace the outline with a 2H pencil. You don't need to press too hard to transfer the line work as this can cause an indentation on the paper. I then take the sheet to that A3 drawing board. I won't be traditionally stretching the paper, but will use an alternative method that I use and it works pretty well. Next I take my reference image that's also in the PDF and we can add some colour. With watercolour the general rule is to start with the light colours and move up the scale with the darker tones laid on top. So I mix a light pink and cover the flowers with this mix. This tone will only be evident in the highlights on the finished piece, but with watercolours, building up tones on top of one another provides a richer tone. Use the mop and get it on fairly quickly. I create a stronger pink and referring to the reference image, lay it into the appropriate sections. This particular paper can take quite a few layers of paint and on subjects like this, subtle tones can be created. I add more pink into the mix and I start to build more contrast. I mix a bit of red into the pink mix to strengthen it and then lay that on. As I put these coats on, the underlying coat is still damp. This helps the edges soften a bit.
touch of blue into my mix to create a violet and lay this wash over the flowers. I then lay pure red over the darkest parts of the flower. To soften the tone, I lay clean water on the petal I'm working on and then add the paint. Although the paint has a mind of its own, when you add it into a very wet base, it can still be pushed around and controlled to an extent. Of course, watercolours rely on the white point of the paper showing beneath the translucent colour to supply vibrancy. So bear this in mind and don't build up the tone that much that this attribute is no longer apparent. Continually refer to the reference image and put in what you see. As I said in the introduction, I didn't traditionally stretch the paper, which involves submerging the paper in water for a time, then laying it flat, using gummed paper to adhere the edges to a work surface, and then letting it dry, thereby allowing the fibres in the paper to contract to their maximum point. Instead, I wet the pre-taped paper and dry it. This is a quick way of contracting the fibres, and that is okay for a study like this. I then mix up the colours I intend to use in my background in wells. I re-wet my background around the flowers with clean water and using a three-quarter flat tacklon, I lay in the paint wet on wet. I'm using yellow ochre, black, blue and a touch of green. In this background, I get the paint on as quickly as I can as the paper needs to be wet and if it dries, the colours won't be as inclined to meld together. The colours form an earthy green. If your paper is drying a little quickly, just give it a spritz with some water. I often create studies like this prior to starting on finished paintings to see if the composition and the colours all work together. The last stage of the background is to let it dry and then lay a thin viridian glaze over the top. See you next time!